like to do things a little backwards sometimes, don't we? Most of the time. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here tonight. I'm thankful that you came once again on Wednesday night. I don't take that for granted. You are a blessing to us. And, uh, hey, it's Vicki. You snuck in on me. Praise the Lord. That traffic, got to love it, huh? You'd think the spring break has become a little better. Uh-uh. <laughs> it's gotten a little worse, I guess. I'm glad you made it in. Too. Thank you, me too. Uh, Lord has really been blessing. We've been going through these the, this series, and it's it's a foundation series. It's a discipleship series, and the purpose of this is for us to refresh and remind ourselves what do we believe and why. Now I better stop now. Is there anyone in the auditorium right now that has not that did not pick up one of our uh, fill in the blank? Notes. All right. You got an extra right there. Fantastic. And uh, I believe there's a. <laughs> I believe there might be a couple more on the last table. We need another. Anyone else? Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Miss Jennifer. You just got thrown under the bus. But Don, you're out there. Bring those extra copies in here, please. There's no more extra copies. Well, what'd you do with them? I made extra copies. Oh, there's an extra. Is that an extra one, Miss Jenny? Okay. That's for the extra one. You can have one. <laughs> he, he, he doesn't know how to read or write anyway, so he's not going to take notes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Sorry, Miss Jennifer. I don't know what to do with him either. Yeah. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. This is what we... We started this, this study tonight, uh, or last week, on reading, studying the Bible. The verse says this, study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right. We're going through this discipleship series because I believe the Lord's going to start, and, and, and he already has. In fact, I've got uh, some that are... Uh, starting some discipleship this weekend. Uh, they just really want to know more about the Word of God, know more about what the Bible, what does the Bible say? Not what does man say, not as what is our philosophy, what is our thought, but what does the Bible say? And uh, I believe God is going to continuously send us people um, in the upcoming days ahead that desire to know more. Well, this is the, the basis where we start at. A true discipleship is one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, therefore we need to have a review. We need to make sure it's fresh in our mind. What do we believe and why based on the Word of God? As we look at this, the biblical truth uh, for the study, that we, for this, this lesson, if you will, lesson seven, is this. The key verse is the command by the Lord to study to show so that, excuse me, we can be workmen. That rightly divided, rightly interpret the Word of God. Christians accept the Bible as their final authority on all matters of faith and practice. It is a good practice, therefore, to both read and study the Bible so that we can live what we say is our final authority. We talked about that a little bit last week. We say the Bible is our final authority, but do we live as if the Bible is our final authority? It is critically important as disciple makers that we learn to study and become teachers of the Bible. And we looked last week at uh, talking about the difference between reading and studying. Those are two different things. And last week our study was how to read the Bible. And we talked about a systematic reading, uh, making sure we find con a convenient time. Uh, and we talked about the difference between reading early and reading late in the day. You know, some would say, you know, I do my better reading later today. And I, I understand that. But let me challenge you. That's when more excuses come up as well. Uh, more things pile up on you during the day. We talk about starting with prayer when we read the Bible. Because things in the Bible are spiritually discerned. The Holy Spirit is, is uh, God himself teaching us. His responsibility is to teach. Making sure we prioritize our time. We don't waste the time that we have. Uh, that we spend it reading the Bible. Uh, that we read it in a systematic fashion or in an orderly fashion. 
Because um, certain things were in the Bible are, are mysteries and, we're, are, and will be kept mysteries. But, uh, but we need to make sure. Marking things in your Bible. We talk about different things to mark. Promises. Examples to follow. Commands to obey. Sins to avoid. Uh, and keeping lists of similar things. Uh, pray using the scripture. And then we, we talk about as we read. To take time to write down questions that come from your reading. Uh, that way we, we have an understanding uh, of, uh, we have something to base, maybe a study that is laying on our heart. We just didn't recognize it. Uh, some questions that are there. But along with a systematic reading of the Bible comes Bible study. But we need to be systematically reading the Bible. Notice, we need to be reading our Bibles daily. Right. But we also need to be studying our Bibles daily. Now, here's where most here's what most of us fail to do. Maybe you're consistent in reading. Maybe not. Can I implore you? Can I beg of you? Start reading the Bible. Yes. And secondly, though, may I beg of you to start studying? To get a deeper meaning. Christianity today is so shallow. It's shallow. Yes. We, we say we're Christians and we 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 go to church. And in fact, we may be at church three days a week, three times a week, uh, and and we volunteer, we do all these things. But our but across the world, across America, across the world, across the world. Uh, Christianity is just a term. And too many times it's so shallow and weak that literally they are it's just a name that we claim. Hey, it's tax season. It's just a name we claim so we get a tax deduction in funds. So we get more back on our taxes. Listen, Christianity in the world today has become so shallow. Why? Because people don't study the Bible. Oh, yeah, we come to church and we say the Bible, God's word, is, is my final authority to everything that I'm going to do. But yet we go out and live and this collects dust all week and we live like the world. I'm going to stay with you. Right. Because we're not reading it like we are. And if we are reading it, we're definitely not studying it. We're not searching the scriptures to see what they really say. What does this really mean? Uh, in my in, in, in telling you and teaching you about how I want to stay accountable to the church, uh, you know, I I want to make sure that you don't just take everything I say at face value and accept it. You should be studying to make sure I'm preaching the truth. And you better have the guts to tell me when I'm not. Because I don't want to harm the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hey. But we fail at studying the Bible. <coughs> we fail at studying the Bible. The Bible teaches us here in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 15, chapter 2, verse 13, that study is to prepare a workman. The scriptures that we study are the word of God. <coughs> They're very powerful. Okay, question. I know you're writing and you're frequently writing because I usually fly through these slides. But answer this question. Is this God's word? Amen. Is it his very words? Yeah. The Bible says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. God breathed. And it's possible for doctrine, for, for correction, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto good works. Amen. But if we say we believe these are God's words, why don't we read them, Christian? Why don't we study them, Christian? Right. Well, I don't know what God says about this. Because we're not reading his word, we're not studying what his word says. It's powerful. They are also, speaking of 
speaking of his word, very profitable. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scriptures given by inspiration of God. Now listen. They took a young child named Timothy and made him a man of God. Here in, in Timothy, it's talking about, and from a child he knew the Holy Scriptures. Why? Because his family was teaching him that. Teaching him from God's word. And then from a child, they took him from a child, from a young man, to a flourishing, uh, if you will, follower of Paul. And a great preacher. Number one, study time is different than reading time. This is, listen, I know this is more of a classroom setting, if you will, and, and some of this is going to be very basic, but we've got to get it. Study is the pursuit of the understanding of a certain topic or passage. A passage. What is a, when I say a passage, what does it mean? That is a set of verses, chapter, or an entire book. It's a section. It's a, it's a, a grouping of verses. That you read as part of your daily reading could become the subject of a study. You can be reading through uh, your Bible, and as you read through your Bible, a question comes up, enters your mind. And, and I've always learned, and I'm, I'm still learning, but I've always heard, and I'm still learning, the fact that if I don't write down what comes to my mind, it's gone. Amen. So, uh, therefore, while you're reading your Bible, and, a, and a, maybe a question comes to mind. At that point, write it down. Then it can become a part of Bible study. Okay, I'm going to go back to that later this evening. After I, see, I've read it this morning. And now I've gone through the day, and because I've read it, because I've prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to guide me, I began reading, I read it throughout the day. Can I tell you it's neat how the Holy Spirit sometimes works? There's sometimes I'm working on something on my truck. On the house. And God brings back to my mind something that I read that morning. And the Holy Spirit begins applying it or explaining it through what I'm doing. And then I can sit down that night and truly begin to study. Bring it in and say, okay, what all was God trying to say to who it was or what it was and to me now? Additionally, a topic that came up in a passage, such as grace, can become a focus of a study you conduct on the word grace in the Bible. We understand that the Holy Spirit is responsible for teaching us. He's responsible for showing us. We learned that last week as we were studying, as we were talking about reading the Bible, and the Holy Spirit's there to guide us. And to teach us. But we must be about going back and studying, allowing the Holy Spirit to do even more in our hearts and lives. The goal in study should be first the understanding and practice of a Bible truth learned, then the teaching of it to others. right here. And this is why I said true Bible study, we fail at this. The goal in study should be first to understand and practice and practice of the Bible truth Lord. Yeah, I desire to study and to, to learn a little bit more, but it's also that then I can teach it to others. How many of us remember the last time we took a spiritual truth? Something God gave us that we studied in the Word of God. 
God and we taught somebody else. And I'm not talking about in Sunday school. I'm talking about in your daily life. You took a principle that you gained through Bible study. Found it upon this alone. And you were able to take that and help somebody else with it. Do you see why I said many times that this is the part we fail at? The other day, we had a shower and somebody brought something and dropped it off uh, with me. And uh, I was talking with him and he asked the question, he says, I just don't understand this. So I, had, I took a few minutes and I talked with him. I said, you know, it's amazing. I said, it shouldn't surprise me. I said, but it's amazing that my Bible study last week was on this very topic. And we began talking. We talked for about 15 minutes out there. Can I tell you? It's not because I'm a preacher. It's not because I'm the pastor. It's because I studied my Bible last week. And I'm praising what I did it last week, okay? Yeah. I'm not saying I'm perfect and I do it every single day like I'm supposed to. I'm just a man. But I'm thankful that I obeyed last week. And maybe it's because I did this study and went through this study myself before I came to teach it to you. Maybe that's why. I, mean, I got convicted and I did it. And guess what? God showed me the, react, the results of actually doing it. And can I tell you, he'll show you too. Number two. Commentaries. Now, this is a bit of warning slash information here. Commentaries, Bible helps, concordances, and other study guides are helpful. Look at that next word. However, they all contain the biases of their authors and not infallible like the Bible. I use commentaries. I've got several. In fact, I've got a library of them in my, in my office. But I have to be careful because they're just men just like me. And they wrote what they thought the Bible meant. Does that mean that they're infallible? No. Does that mean they always put the nail on the head as to what it meant? No. You have to be careful. Very good. And starting out in truly good Bible study, can I take start out with these things? A good English dictionary. Just to be able to look up the origin of a word. Look up what the word that you think you know what mean what it means really means. A, and a concordance. Well, what is a concordance? Other verses with that same word in it. And a searchable electronic Bible are really all that is necessary. I love, I've got computer programs on every, I'm a, I'm a techie, so I have a lot of electronic devices and I'm on every single one of them. Guess what? I have a Bible app of some sort that is searchable. Why? Because, you know, there's sometimes I'm at a hospital or sometimes I'm at a visit and, you know, I'll have my little, my little New Testament with me. And I'll, I always have my phone with me because that's my electronic leash. Okay? That's what that is. Um, and then uh, and somebody will ask me a question on a verse, and I'll go, I don't remember where that is. Or, I don't know what that means. And I'll pull out my app, and I'll search the verse real quick. And then I'll read the verse, read it in context, and then I'll search for other verses on the same topic. Can I tell you the Bible does a great job of explaining itself? If you'll read enough of it. Okay. If you'll search enough of it. If you'll study enough of it. One example of that. Take the disciples. Disciples were Jesus Christ. 
They're walking about, and Jesus Christ gives a, gives a parable. He gives the parable, and his disciples are there, and they heard it, and, he, and, they, and then what happens? They go away and with Jesus, and they say, all right, uh, Jesus, um, what did you just mean by that? And he goes, I, you know, this is my perversion of Scripture. Don't you understand this? You ought to understand this. I've been, get, I've been teaching this to you for for, you know, ever since you've been walking with me. He says, but so that you'll know. And he begins to explain the passage to them. God's word is, is amazing like that. Uh, number three. Things you study can come out of your daily reading. And this is kind of a review. Your Sunday school classes or sermons delivered in church. Notice the, the title that we've had on, on our title slide. Take him at his word. Not take Brother Keith at his word. Because we need to be doing our due diligence to take God at his word. You know what God says. Number four, though. Continuing on, number four. Bill, before beginning the study, you should understand two important things about the Bible. Kind of give you an eye over here. Firstly, well, no, wait a minute. Oh, walk back. Is everybody, everybody there? I want to make sure everybody's got the blanks filled in or on that. We there? You good? You got it, Rotel? You good? Okay. All right. Firstly, we'll lay. Thank you, Mike. Firstly, it is a legal document, and as such, is written oftentimes in legal terms. Did you ever know? Did you, did you know that about the Bible? This is God's covenant with us. Yes. And the covenant in Bible study, the Bible at that time were legal forms of what I what I say I'm going to do, I'm going to do. I'm going to make a covenant with you. Uh, look, at what the, look at what the Bible says, John chapter 12, verses 47 and 48. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my word hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. All throughout the Bible, you see references to God being a judge. We see a reference of Jesus Christ standing before the judgment, taking our judgment, taking our... Are you getting what I'm saying? Many times... All throughout the Bible, it's used as a legal document. It's written in legal terms. You say, well, I'm a lawyer. That's why you study. Brother Fred White's not here tonight. He, he, normally they're here on Wednesday night. But, uh, but I tell you what, that man has to study. He needs to know previous cases in regards to the current case he's working on. Well, why is that? So that he can best defend his client, right? I sure would like to know more about how Jesus Christ defended me, his client. Me, his child. Understand, there are going to be things that are going to be hard to understand. Because it's written in a way that maybe it's written legally and I'm just not legally minded. Then I need to study. Little b, the Bible is understand in part by knowledge and in part by faith. Look, we're talking about two things that, that, that as we begin the Bible study, things that will be important for, to help us understand. Number one, many times you're going to find legal terms written in, it is a legal document. 
is a big promise. It is a covenant between you and God himself. But also, little b, the Bible is understood in part by knowledge and in part by faith. Some things will be easy to grasp and others will require faith to understand because they are the works of an infinite, eternal God. Like the creation. Hebrews 11, verses 1 through 3. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things that were seen, excuse me, so things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. We read Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Do we understand that? Do you understand that? Do I understand how something can come from absolutely nothing? No. But by faith, I believe it. By faith, I trust it. By faith, I rest upon it, period. So I've got to understand that, that God was infinite. In other words, his mind, his knowledge, his abilities are beyond anything that I can even think or believe or fathom. So, once again, it goes back to all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's God breathed. So I understand that there's going to be certain things in the Bible I'm just going to have to take by faith and trust God at his word. Now, let me give you three, number five, let me give you three basic tenets of Bible study. Three foundations, if you will, of Bible study. Little A. Read what it says. In parentheses, observation. It is important to read the passage many times and even meditate. Think about the words used on the verses for a time. Now remember, we're not just talking about Bible reading here. Now we've, we've gone, we've, we've crossed that step, and now we're looking at Bible study. So let's first off, let's just observe what the Bible says. That means I may take some time to read it a couple of times. My daughter's homeschool. Daddy, I don't get what this pair, what this, what these instructions are telling me to do. Oh, okay, we'll bring it to me. Yeah, yeah, right. Hey, babe, do you know what these mean? Do you know what this, 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 these instructions say to do? I mean, they write the instructions like you are a teacher. You know, and you should understand all things, right? Uh, uh, give me a minute, uh, Ellie. Um, just, just hold that thought for a minute. Let me read through this a couple times. Look, the same thing is true with the Bible reading. There's many times that we'll read through something, and we didn't get it at all. And just by simply reading it a couple more times, it may help. It may... Break through that thought. Uh, those instructions on, on the language book the other day. It was neat because I read, I had to read them a couple of times. Because you know it says draw an arrow to this and underline this and underline this twice and, and put a slash here and, and label it this, that, and the other. There's a lot of instructions in that one little, one sentence. And sometimes that's, you just, you know, huh? So the same thing is true about the Bible. There may be a lot. And there is a lot. There may be even more that God wants to give you out of a passage. And if you just read it one time, you're not going to get it all. So uh, read what it says, observation. And, and read it a couple times. And then even, like, that's why I said read it. Read it and then think about it. Uh, little I says the context 
of the passage is key. But what is the context? It is important to know who is being spoken to and what events are happening and in what Bible age the passage occurred. Who, what, where, when, why? Context. And you know what? You can't get context from one verse. You need to read verses before it and after it to truly get the context of what the Bible is saying. There's so many people today that take one verse and they pull it out and then they present it to people and say, but can I tell you what this Bible verse says? Now, yeah, if you take that verse by itself, it does say that. But if you put it into context, it doesn't mean that at all. Christian, be careful. Be very careful. So as you're studying, you've got to take note. We're talking about the observation part. Take note of the context. Okay, what's going on? Who's it written to? What's being said? Uh, what's going on around them? Why? And, and, and look for, the, for everything about that situation in the Bible. A little... Little to, little I, I says, believe what you read regardless of your level of understanding. Believe what you read regardless of your level of understanding. Hebrews 4, 2, for unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You know, sometimes I believe God just wants to know whether we're going to believe him and take him at his word or not. You ever thought about that? A little kid standing on the side of the counter. Jump to me, I'll catch you. They jump, take a step back. Jump to me, I'll catch you. Now, the very first time they jumped me, guess what? They got to take me at my word, right? Have they experienced it yet? No. Do they understand it yet? No. They just know Daddy said jump, and I'll catch you. Sometimes we, God, I believe God puts things in the Bible to say, okay, Brian, are you going to believe me? Jump, I'm going to catch you. Jimmy, you're going to take me in my word? <laughs> <laughs> Please understand what I'm saying here. There's going to be certain times, look, it says that in Hebrews, they didn't have the faith mixed with it. First Thessalonians 2 13, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because. When you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. You received it not as men, as, as the word of men, but as the word of God. So as we're talking about this Bible study, three basic tenets, we said, read what it says, little b. Find out what it means. Talking about Bible study now. Find out what it means. Interpretation. Find out what the Bible is saying. Usually the interpretation is apparent in the context. And interpretation issues revolve around smaller thoughts or words. But allow the context to guide the interpretation, not your thoughts, not somebody else's thoughts. This was a little deeper. This was a little harder to, to grasp this right here. Find out what it means. What does the what does the Bible really mean right here? And let the context. Once again, who's it written to? When is it written? What's going on? Let that guide what it means. And notice what I said there. Um, usually the, the, the interpretation is apparent in the context. And the interpretation issues 
revolve around smaller thoughts and words. Well, the context to guide the interpretation. Many times, figurative language is followed up with literal explanation. Figurative language is followed up by literal explanation. Matthew chapter 13 is the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus Christ is talking about the mysteries of, of heaven. What is heaven about? What is heaven like? And here they, they he gives all these mysteries. In Matthew chapter 13, I'm just kind of explaining Matthew chapter 13 to you. But I want you to go back and, and what happens. Jesus Christ, he teaches the mystery. At the beginning of the chapter, you have um, the mysteries that Christ is. He gives the mysteries of the kingdom, the mystery of the tares among the wheat, the mystery of the grain of mustard seed. Well, the mystery of the leaven. And his disciples. Disciples said, All right. Verse 36, then Jesus sent the multitude away, and this is in Matthew 13, and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. And then Jesus turns around and answer, he, he begins explaining to you. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, many times the figurative or the parable is followed up by a literal. In other words, something you can sink your teeth in. You can make sense of. You can make sure you're making sense of it the right way. Now, let's look at this. This is, this is uh, important that we find out the true interpretation. Little, little one, little I, successful interpretation will be a growing process involving your daily reading and constant study. Successful interpretation will be a growing process involving your daily reading and consistent study. It cannot be rushed. Don't rush your Bible study. Apply it. Isaiah 28. Whom shall he, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. The more consistent we are with our Bible reading, the more consistent we are with our Bible study, the more we will begin to grow to understand. Once again, this is a growing process, this is not an immediate process. That's why we say precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little, there a little. Little two, or I, I, the simplest explanation of a passage should be accept, accepted over the very complex explanation. The simplest should be accepted over the complex. Last men's Bible study, uh, Brother Stephen Adams was, was there, and uh, he's from London, and uh, still has a, a strong British accent, and uh, he's, uh, him and his wife and his daughter have been visiting for some time now, and uh, so he came to the men's, Bible, men's cookout, and we were there, and and uh, he's sitting at the table, and he's talking about the Church of England, the Anglican Church, and where it was started, how it was started, and how Henry VIII didn't have the right to, uh, based upon the Pope, to kill one of his wives, to leave, excuse me, to divorce one of his wives, and because he didn't have, um, the Pope wouldn't give permission, he said, fine, I'll start my own church. And I'll get men in there that will allow me to force my wife. But guess what? They didn't either. So what did he do? But he started talking about all the religion 
in the Church of England. And the fact is that many of them, they don't carry Bibles. They don't have Bibles. In fact, they're encouraged not to have Bibles. Because the Word of God is too complicated for them to understand. Why do you think they, that many times they read the Scripture in Latin? Or another language. He was just, he said, I, he, he's been in the state since 2000. He says, I just love that we get in, in the church and we get in the Word of God and, and we can read it together. And that we can study it together. The, the object is, is taking it simply at what it says. In Ezra's day, they read the Bible and gave the sense of it. That is a simple explanation of what it means. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 8. So they read in the book of, in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense or the practical of it. The what it simply says. Little, little three. I, 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 Bible doctrines are best understood and explained using Bible words. That's why it's important to go Bible. Look, the Bible is the best explanation, the best definition, the best. The Bible is the best book to explain the Bible. So you study it, you find that out. 1 Corinthians 2.13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Taking the word of God and comparing it to the word of God. The third tenet or third foundation to our Bible study, the first was to read what it says, observation. The second was Find out what it means, interpretation. The third, a uh, little c, consider how it applies, application. Consider how it applies. Probably the most important part is the application. In our Bible study, the most important part is the application. Applying it. Through application of the Bible comes godliness and more knowledge. Little I, or little number one, we should adorn ourselves with the doctrines of truth. That means we should apply them and live what we study. When it says adorn ourselves, it's literally a Bible term for we're literally wearing it, using it, putting it all over us. Titus 2.10, not for warning, but showing all good fidelity. That they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. We may wait. Look, we once again goes back to this. We say that this is our final authority. This is my final authority, right? And we've said that. We have it on our church website. This is our final authority. But when we have to make a decision, what do we do? Come on now. What do we do? Do we go back to the Bible and see what it says? Or do we, do we try to make sense of what we think we should do? 